Good morning, guys. So today for our devotional, we are talking about what might happen. And our scripture is 1 Peter 5, 7. And it says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. And I'm just going to leave it on there for a couple of seconds. Because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to give all our worries and cares to him. Whatever we're facing, whatever we're dealing with, he wants us to give it all to him because he cares about us. Right? So I want you guys to just be encouraged by the scripture this morning. You know, even say this, I give all my worries and cares to God for God cares about me. Amen. According to 1 Peter 5, 7, you know, and then, you know, he, he has all things concerning you. He knows the solution. He sees your situation. He knows how he's going to move. You know, nothing occurs to him. So just know that whatever you're dealing with this morning, whether it be financially or something you're dealing with internally in your soul, whether it's something spiritual, whether it's something in your family or relationships or with your business or ministry or job or marriage or whatever the situation may be, you can give that to God because God cares about you, you know, and he, he got you, you know. So that's First Peter 5, 7. So let's read, guys. It says, have you ever, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, and I'm just kind of getting up, so hopefully you guys can hear me. And it says, have you ever watched a boxer dancing around the ring, throwing punches at no one in particular? He's using a training technique called shadow boxing, sparring or sparing with an imaginary opponent. Now imagine that same boxer, but with a bizarre twist. While he's in the ring alone, his head thrusts backward again and again, as though someone were punching him in the face, but there's no one else around. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? As strange as that scenario seems, it's an image of what can happen to us when we start sparing with imaginary ills. Our anxiety turns us into human punching bags, battered by thoughts not about what is, but about what might be. I might never get married. I might lose my job. My husband might leave me. My child might not graduate. My plane might crash. The economy might collapse. My mother might die. I might not have enough money to retire. And even just with this, it's like we're reminded to um, think on good thoughts, think on good things, and literally cast our cares on God, according to 1 Peter 5, 7. Like um, this sidebar, God doesn't want us worry. You know, God is not sending a spirit of worry or anxiety um, into our lives. He don't want us worried. He don't want us anxious about things you know that's why he wants us to trust him in getting his word and yes there's times in life where things come to our mind you know realistically we know this is happening or these different things but it's like god doesn't want that to consume us where we have more faith in that being stressed and worried and in fear than having faith in him and allowing our faith to be greater than the fear you know, so I know we have some videos talking about that. So let me just keep reading. And guys, the camera is doing that light thing because of the time. Um, it's still set on um, comfort mode or something. Okay, let's see where we were. Okay, there there are plenty of places in scripture that tell us not to be anxious. But, hold on guys, okay. But to place our trust in God, who alone is our peace. One example is 1 Peter 5, 7, which gives us a clear directive. And another one we're going to read today is, or reread is Philippians 4, 4 through 8. I'm going to read that also. One example is 1 Peter 5, 7, which gives us a clear directive. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. The next time you feel anxiety rising inside you like mercury in a thermometer, let it be the signal that you need to spend some time with God. Have a conversation with him. Tell him you want to focus on him rather than on all the what else that will sell you. Because that's what the enemy wants to use to try to get you to focus more on your problem or situation than the God that is greater than the problem or situation. 
You know, he want to come in and, and pull you down when you're vulnerable and have you focus more on what may or may not happen than God, who is greater than the problem, who is greater than the situation, who did not leave you there to just leave you there, or who is greater than the enemy, you know. Okay, tell him you want to focus on him rather than on all the what else that assail you. Begin by praising and thanking him. Then... Lift up the people and situations that are troubling you. As you pray, imagine that God is in the room, which of course he is. Rest in his presence. If you make a habit of spending time with God daily, you will find that your anxiety will gradually be displayed, displaced by God's peace. And that is so true. And the prayer for this devotional says, Lord, you are my rock, the one who steadies me. Thank you for your great faithfulness. I remember the things you have already done for me, forgiving, loving, and protecting me. Because you care about what happens to me, I can entrust the future to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, to go with this 1 Peter 5, 7, I'm also going to read um, Philippians 4, 4 through 8. And then I'm going to tell you guys what we're talking about today, which we're talking about um, teamwork. We're going to be talking about teamwork, but before we get into teamwork, I'm going to read Philippians 4, 4 through 8 for someone. Just bear with me a second, guys. Okay. So, we have a Philippians series, Philippians 4, is exhortations. Um, <clears throat> thanks for their gifts, final greetings. But we're going to read uh, for... 4 4 through 8 which says rejoice in the Lord always I will say it again rejoice let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus and here's verse 8 Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Amen. So you guys be encouraged um, by that. And we're going to get into our teamwork scriptures. That's our um, that's our letter for today's T and our word is teamwork. Um, and we're going to be reading from Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, Proverbs 27, 17, and 1 Corinthians 12, 20 through 25. That's all the scriptures that I have for um, this devotional. So you guys can go along with me in your Bibles or you can just keep looking at the screen. get to Ecclesiastes so Ecclesiastes 4 is oppression toil and friendlessness and advancement is meaningless uh, we've read this series but we're going to read verses 9 through 12 it says two are better than one <clears throat> excuse me guys because they have a good return for their work if one falls down his friend can help him up but pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three screens is not quickly broken, or a three screen cord is not um, easily broken. And you know, even think about um, teamwork in your life. You know, who are some people that God has sent into your life? Notice I said God, that God has sent into your life because the enemy will send people too. He'll send opportunities, places, things, you know. So I said, who has God sent into your life that helps you to be a better person, that you can partner with, um, you know, in teamwork when it comes to business, when it comes to ministry, when it comes to work, when it comes to God's kingdom? Um, who are those people? Are they friends? Are they family members? Are they brothers and sisters in Christ? Even, you know, what I've been some ways that you have partnered with God to advance his kingdom or allow him to have his way in your life, you know, because there are um, 
where God wants us to partner with his Holy Spirit. He wants us to partner with him. He wants us to um, agree with him, you know, and then there's that um, famous saying, I don't know who came up with it, but that quote says, teamwork makes the dream work, you know, because there are some things that, you know, we can do alone, that it may be us that has to do that but then there are some things where we got to partner with others and then there are also times where um god will send people in our life to help us along our way but then there's times where we're we're called to go and be a blessing and help someone else along their way you know and it could be anything like we have videos so many talking about um teamwork and unity in God's plan and will and helping others and allow others to help you practically and spiritually. So what would be some ways that, you know, teamwork, that teamwork is, um, is, um, manifested in your life, whether that be spiritually or physically, you know? So, um, that's Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Now we're going to move into Proverbs 27, 17. In Proverbs 27, oh, here it is, 27, 17, says, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. <clears throat> you know, and with teamwork, who are some people, just like we've been talking about over the years with the math system, you know, there's people in our life that come to take away from us and subtract from us. There's people in our life that come to divide and conquer they want to divide and conquer. There's people in our life that want to add into us. They want to see us grow. They want the best for us. They want to help add into our lives. You know, and there's people in our life that want to multiply. They want to help to multiply what God has placed in us and see us do good and, you know, build up God's kingdom and just excel on all areas. So you got to look at that. You know, because as there are righteous connections in unity, there are demonic connections in unity. So, you know, you want to look at, like I've been telling you guys over the years, we have teachings on it, classes on it. We've done quizzes and things on this um, teamwork. You know, who's coming in your life to add, to multiply, to divide, to subtract? And I'm going to go back to this. There are some people in our life that can never repay us for the blessings that we are in their life, but it will be credited to God and that person life will be better and vice versa you know with us as well but you know you really want to look at who is sitting in your life what their assignment is if they're sent from God if they're sent from the enemy you know and what people people's roles are in your life you know a lot of people wait for the new year to begin new year resolutions you know and that's okay for what it's worth but you know you got a whole year you got your whole life. You got time and you don't have time to waste, you know. So like I've been telling you guys over the years, you need to ask God, God, who is in my life that doesn't need to be? Who is in my life that just was seasonal? Who is in my life that you want to continue to be, you know, and who did you not sin? What, what do I need to be looking at? You could even relate this to not just relationships, but <clears throat> business, um, opportunities, ministry, dreams goals certain seasons you're in you know it's important to be partner with god it's important to you know be doing what he needs you to be to do and be connected with who he wants you to be connected with and like i said in so many other videos don't wait until next year make the most of your now because you never know you shutting off that dead weight and being connected and realigned to who and what God really wants you to be can catapult and accelerate you even from this October time now going into 2021. You know, on the Jewish calendar, they're already in the new year, but on the Gregorian calendar, it's a couple more months for the new year. You know, so it's like you want to maximize your time. You want to be effective now. Why put off to why put off, you know, for tomorrow what you can do today? Like my grandma would tell me all the time growing up, don't put off tomorrow what you can do today, which means make the most of the time while you have time because tomorrow is not always promised. Okay, so that's Proverbs um, 27, 17. And the last one we're going to read is 1 Corinthians 12, 20 through 25.
and we're going to do some decrees too before we close this video but first corinthians 12 we have a series on this as well it's talking about spiritual gifts one body many parts so we've read this but i'm going to read um i'm actually going to read verse 14 through 25 let's read 14 yeah 14 through 25 Okay, now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it will not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am an eye, I do not belong to the body, it will not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty while our presentable parts need no special treatment but god has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other and let me read um actually let me just read 26 to 27 Okay, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you, okay, yeah, I had read this. Okay, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. And it continues on, guys. Like I said, we have a Corinthian series and we've come from this many times, but it's talking about spiritual gifts in one body, many parts. But let's do some decrees, guys. Um that's pretty much it for our bible study and devotional that's all the notes um but let's do some decrees for whoever um this video was for with this teamwork and what we were talking about you know father god we decree and declare right now that we are connected to what and who you have us to be connected to have your way and will in our lives open up within us and in our lives what needs to be open in every area god and close whatever needs to be closed within us and in our lives in every area help us to be united with you and united to what you want us and who you want us to be connected to and effective in our god-given times and seasons knowing our god-given times and seasons and walking in it well in jesus mighty name amen and for some of you, God is going to begin severing ties, soul ties with people and places and things that needs to be severed and connecting you with the right people. Because see, God wants you to be effective and he wants you to receive everything that he has for you. He don't want you going through no unnecessary warfare. He doesn't want you suffering in vain. He doesn't want your blessings and glory script in um, your energy and different things in your time and your life and your destiny script because of the wrong divine connections so you know grace and peace to y'all thanks for tuning in i'll see y'all back tomorrow lord's well which is friday we're going to be talking about unity and uniqueness and then um for the devotional we're talking about overwhelming victory so i pray that you guys have a great day and god bless <laughs>